Second Donald Maga. Please be seated. It's always a blessing to be here with you at this conference. You know, Reshma and I share about the faith of the intercessors in Philippines all over the world. You have inspired us and blessed us with your passion for God. And you know what? Your passion is beginning to catch on. Because others throughout the earth are beginning to come alive in the same way. You're a first fruit. As I was praying about what the Lord would want me to share at this particular conference, I kept hearing the Lord tell me, study the number 30. And he kept saying that for about three days, and I said, okay, Lord. And as I began to study about the number 30 or the 30th year, a spirit of prophecy fell upon me. And there is a powerful prophetic unction from the Lord for this gathering in this 30th year. This is the demarcation line. It is the beginning of of something extraordinary. You know, in ancient Hebrew culture, I've shared with you before some of this, I'm going to do it again just to remind you. In ancient Hebrew culture, we read in the scripture that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. From the time of birth, that child is placed under tutors until the time appointed by the Father. That time is 30 years of age. At that point in his process of maturation, of growing up, of developing godly character, of having a measure of maturity, the Father would then take that child into the gate of the city where all of the religious uh, questions were resolved, all this, the business was taken care of in the city. And so the father would bring that son before the leaders of the city, and at an appointed time during that day, he would present this child to this August gathering, and he would proclaim, Today I adopt this child as my son and joint heir. And from that day on, that young man, that son, was recognized as a member of that particular household who walked in full authority, able to conduct the business of that household as a mature son. IFP has just come of age. Let me tell you why that's so important. The number 30 is used as a sign of physical or mental maturity. Everything that has gone on for the last 30 years has been a process of the development of godly character, godly integrity, with the Lord perfecting that destiny, that ministry within you because you've come to the time of profound fruitfulness in what he's called you to. The fact, and I've been hearing these testimonies for the last five years we've been coming and, and being able to visit. The fact that you so honor the word of the prophets, the fact that you record everything that's ever spoken and then you transcribe it, and you listen to the voice of God, you treasure what God is speaking has brought great favor upon you. The favor of God is resting upon the Philippines right now. Amen. 
You know, you, you've heard some wonderful things today. I want to tell you something. Don't look at the natural realm and base your faith upon what it looks like in the world. You base your faith upon the Word of God and the God of the Word. The Lord has been prophesying and speaking to this nation not only to contend for its destiny, but about the release of some strategic things that have to do with the kingdom of heaven coming to pass in this nation. You are a first fruit. You are going to come forth now in a way that the world has not witnessed a people group or a nation arising as it is going to begin to happen now at the end of the age. You have reached maturity in this process. And the strength of God is going to be manifested in your gatherings and in your lives. The 30th year is an age when you are ripe for leadership. Well, wait a minute. I thought we had leadership. No, you were training for the leadership the Lord has in mind in the days ahead. It's about to spring forth. It's a new thing that's not been seen before. Look at the leadership of Elijah. Look at the leadership of Enoch. In their generations, just as in this generation, the last generation, God raised up an individual in the past, but he's raising up a people in the end of the age that are going to stand forth with maturity and stand forth in authority and be prepared to be leaders at the end of the age and the last great awakening that God is releasing. And you have the favor of God and you're about to see what the favor of God is and the favor of man is upon your life and upon this movement that God has raised up. There is a shift that I have sensed as I've sat here today, a radical shift into a new season. We're no longer going to conduct ourselves as we have in the past. I was reminded, we were ministering in Angeles City just last week, and I was reminded of something the Lord had done about 12 years ago while we were ministering in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And in that meeting, I had an encounter with the Lord. It was on a Rosh Hashanah. I was caught up before the throne of God Almighty, fell flat on my face and could not move, but lay there worshiping the Lord. And believe me when I say I didn't want to move. I want to, for eternity, I could have stayed there worshiping God. Eventually, I was able to stand, and I was, as I was getting up, I noticed there were about 400 other people surrounding, er, around me. We were all looking at the Father. We looked at each other and looked back to the Father. And he was sitting on his throne. And on his right hand, he had a scepter. And he picked up that scepter and he pointed at us and he said, up to half the kingdom, whatever you ask. Immediately, spontaneously, that came out of all of us at once. It was all of you and none of me. I just want to be like you, Jesus. And he put it down. He picked it up again and extended it one more time, up to half the kingdom. And we all responded, all of you and not of me, we just want to be like Jesus. And the third time he did that, and we, I was back in the meeting. And I, we were in the midst of worship. And then I didn't even get to share with my wife what happened. But the Lord released me to go and minister. I mean, they came to get me to go up and minister. And she said afterwards, what happened to you? It was like you were no longer there, but God the Father himself was standing there ministering. Why? Because she saw a level of maturity she had never seen before. And this is what happened. When I came back to myself in that meeting and I was standing there, pondering what just had happened, all of a sudden, I felt a burning on my ring finger, and as I looked, the Lord had placed a signet ring on my hand. That speaks of sonship, of coming of age, where the Lord finally says, today I adopt you as my son, and they would put the signet ring on. 
And the Lord is saying the same thing to you today on this 30th anniversary. Today, He is adopting you as mature, mature sons and daughters. And He's releasing you into this realm of mature destiny that He's called you to. All of creation has been groaning and awaiting the coming forth of mature sons and daughters. But well, we have entered into that season where that is beginning to happen. And we should be a people that rejoices at the goodness of God and the mercy of God for what He is releasing to you and I in this hour. And so as I was sitting there, the Lord reminded me one more time of that very thing. This is the day of your coming forth as mature sons. And at the same time, the Lord is extending to you that scepter of favor. Now listen, what happened that night when I ministered was like a volcano had gone off. There was such authority. The lion of the tribe of Judah was roaring through me. When we had time for prayer, when everybody, anybody came up, this thing just built in me like I, I was ready to explode because I knew anything that, that that faith, that that power was appointed to or pointed at was done. And we saw some amazing miracles. Why? Because we shifted from being a child in need of tutors into a season of maturity and sonship. We can conduct ourselves just as the Son of God did with the relationship He had with the Father, coming in the Father's character, coming in the Father's authority, coming with the honor of the King of glory upon us. And when we speak, we speak with an authority that causes things to happen immediately. Things are shifting. I've been seeing this since I've been here the last week and a, a little over a week in the Philippines. I kept asking, Lord, what is it you're showing me? What is it you're showing me? And he said, this is a product of coming of age. Because what I kept seeing is, is believers, you, just walking down the street, doing your, your daily life, conducting your daily business, and you, you would come upon somebody in need and you just touch them and say, Jesus loves you, and they were instantly healed or instantly delivered or instantly set free. Nothing more than that. Not a preaching of a sermon, not say, come to our church, go to this church. You just touched them with the love of God and they were instantly set free. It's time for that great awakening. It's time for Fiji, excuse me, not Fiji, for, for the Philippines. There is a connection to Fiji, by the way, but I'll get to that in a minute. It's time for the Philippines to arise. I've commented again this week, I've seen it. All over the world you see two people groups that are loved and accepted everywhere, the Irish and the Filipinos. Everywhere you go. Because you have a destiny as a missionary people. Not just the destiny now, but the Lord is releasing you to physical and mental maturity in the spirit. Thirty also speaks of the letter Lamed in Hebrew. Lamed is the crook of a shepherd, a shepherd's staff. It talks about having a heart for people as well as being able to lead people for the king. It's one thing to be in ministry. It's one thing to be a believer. It's another thing to mentor and lead others in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. And when I say lead, I don't mean just talk and release them. I mean you lead by example and they follow. That's why as you go down the street, as the Lord begins to move in your spirit and you just touch and people are set free, they will follow because they'll see Jesus in you. They'll see Jesus in you. Nearly every time this number is mentioned, it's a reference 
to something significant, either an event or a responsibility. It's an age when you no longer are a boy or a young man, you're a man or a woman of maturity. Here's some examples. Joseph was 30 years old when he became the second in command of Pharaoh after being in prison as a slave in Egypt. All those years, Joseph had labored under the weight of imprisonment, of condemnation, of being an outcast, of told he was nothing and no good. I was told he was never going to amount to anything more than being a prisoner. And yet he remained faithful to God as the Lord dealt with his character so that he could come forth at age 30 into the place of his destiny and in maturity. He went from one moment from the prison to the palace at age 30. Let me say that again. In one day from the prison to the palace because he attained to the age of 30. The influence that has been expressed through this ministry is about to go on steroids because you're stepping out of obscure, out obscurity into the forefront of authority in this hour. This nation is going to hear the voice of God's people, not only in intercession, but the leaders of this movement are going to come to a place of tremendous influence in this hour, and many who are struggling and in the valley of decision, many who are in government that are in darkness and operating in dark realms rather than acknowledging the light of the King of Glory are about to come into the kingdom because you have not let go and you have trusted God. Many who have lived an impoverished life and when I say impoverished, that's got nothing to do with monetary life. Impoverished life is anything that separates you from God. Anything that you put, placed in your life that has been an idol and kept you from God. The Lord is about to break through all of those things and visit a people that are going to be transformed in a moment and come into the kingdom and reap a harvest at the end of the age. I've been watching as we've been traveling. I've seen the people on the streets, the burdens in the spirit. I've, I've seen them carrying these burdens, and my, my heart has been breaking. Normally, I'm very clinical when I see because of the prophetic mantle on my life, but this time my heart was breaking as I, as I was looking at people, and I felt the heart of the Lord for the people in your nation. Let me tell you, when, when you sense that, especially for me in my life and my walk, when I have ever sensed that before, it was just moments before God began to do something extraordinary. There is a tremendous compassion of God right now focused on this nation. His heart is about to be revealed. And that is a good place for an amen. In Genesis 41, 46, it says, Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. In this hour, your maturity is going to bring you before kings. You're going to be counselors to those in authority. There has been some of that in the past as you have been trained and raised up, but it's about to spring forth in a new way. All the priests in the Old Covenant officially entered service at the age of 30. Does not Scripture say that we, have, we are called to be priests and kings before our God? You could never minister to God without having maturity and purity of heart. You could oftentimes still minister to the people but only a few were ever allowed to minister towards God. The determining factor in that was the process that each individual went through, whether it developed godly character or whether they gave themselves over to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
It's wonderful to minister to people. It's necessary like it never has been before. But I want to tell you, God is raising up mature sons, mature daughters who are going to minister to Him in spirit and truth, and it will transform whole regions. Look for a new sound in worship. Look for a new voice in in the proclaiming of the Word because God is shifting everything right now. Numbers 4, 3 says, From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, all that enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, they must be that age. When Moses died, the Israelites mourned him for 30 days. It speaks of a transition from one season to another. You have been laboring in prayer. You have been groaning in intercession. You have been pouring out your hearts of supplication for this nation. But now is the morning when joy springs forth. Now is the hour when you're going to see the fulfillment of God's promise. And those prayers are going to begin to be answered quickly. There's anointing on that one. David became king when he was 30 years old, and he was just a shepherd before that. He went from being a shepherd to a king, from being a shepherd to a king. See, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Don't think what you've been doing has not been recognized in the courts of heaven. That's the only place that counts anyway. Don't ever, ever belittle the fact that intercessory prayer is a hidden thing. Don't ever do that. We all quote John 14, 12 or 12, 14 that says, where Jesus said, the works I do, you'll do also. We all love that because we like the spectacular, the supernatural. We like the bling, the ah, the wow. So do I. But here's the first work Jesus began to do after he rose from the dead. He ever lives to make intercession for you. If you're going to do the works of Jesus, give yourself wholly to intercession. You are the priest of your own temple. Make it a house of prayer for all nations. And then when we come together corporately and bring all of these houses of prayer together and in one voice lift our voice up to God, we shake the heavens and the earth. This is, an, this is a phenomena that's going to t- gain traction from this day forward. It won't be long before this is too small. You better look for a larger venue. I'm just... Listen, I'm just talking about for the intercession, not just the conference. I'm talking about for the intercession. God is raising up true warriors, intercessors that are going to begin to come in now quickly, quickly. They're going to feel the unction and the pull of the Spirit, and they're going to come in. You know what I'm going to believe for for you guys? I believe the first ones that should ever receive help in a ministry. You know, the, the, the Word teaches us clearly that, you know, you don't labor, uh, you muzzle the ox that treads out the grain. And they've always equated that to those in five-fold ministry, but it doesn't say that. No, I believe intercessors should be on the payroll. I'm believing God's going to do something supernatural so those who have a genuine call to intercede will be paid just as much as anybody else. Because that is a ministry that is desperately needed in this hour. Because those who stand on the wall warn and contend and stand in the gap for those who are asleep. So, Father, bless them with that, I pray. David became king when he was 30, he reigned for 40 years. Forty is the number of testing. David reigned through a season of testing. You are now reaching 
maturity. You're going to reign during a season of tremendous testing in the earth and in your nation, but you already have the victory. Light is going to shine forth in the darkness, and it's going to draw multitudes into the kingdom. Rejoice at what you see happening, because it's a sign the devil's in a panic. And he's lost, and he knows it. He just doesn't want the church to know it. You've won, and you have the favor of God smiling upon you. One year the Lord was teaching me about favor, what favor was. I, I began to study that in earnest because it's something he put in my heart to discover. And so as I, I began to do that, I got a revelation from God about what it means to be in favor with both God and man. And it revolutionized my life. And let me give you one testimony. Now, this, one's, this one's one of the most telling ones, but there's many. Reshma and I were ministering in an Episcopal church in Ballard outside of Seattle where the charismatic renewal had begun in the Seattle area. But it was many years ago. And the rector, the, the, the pastor there, John Rodham, said, he'd read my books, he said, why don't you please come and teach at our church for a week? Do the whole series. I said, well, I, okay, that'd be great. I like it when I can do the whole series. But you know, the Episcopal church was not a hallelujah, hold on, or anything church. They were kind of like, But I would, you know, I would poke them. Not like I do that to anybody else, but I, I would say, amen? And they go, uh, amen. <laughs> but I kept doing that. Why? Because I was trying to break them out of the religious box. So Saturday morning, one of the last days there, this man came in and he, he walked up to us. He was kind of scruffy looking, had jeans, long hair, beard. He, he said, why, why do you keep trying to get us to say amen. We're not Pentecostal, you know. I said, brother, I really don't care if, you're Pente if you say amen or not. What I'm trying to do is get you to break out of your religious box. I mean, you're all like dead people walking. He said, you got me so angry by Tuesday night I had to keep coming. I said, what? Then he handed me a check. He said, here. And he went and sat down. Now, that was weird. And you, you know, I don't, I put it in my pocket because I was going to give it to the pastor afterwards. But I was so curious. They're singing their, you know, three hymns and a eulogy or something. And, and I just couldn't help it. I had to take it out and look. And I almost passed out. It was $10,000. I said, Lord, can I irritate a few more people? See, that's called the favor of God. Now, it's not always about money, so don't get that in your mind. I'm going to go irritate some people. No, but God will pour out blessings. You, I mean, wow, where did that come from? I thought he wanted a fight. No, he wanted to bless me. He probably wanted a fight, but he couldn't help him. He couldn't help himself. That's the favor that's on this movement now. That's the favor that's on your life. And during this season of testing, this final move in the end of the age, darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people. Great favor is coming upon the hungry remnant, the passionate people of God. Listen, we all know this. Churches all over the world, when you say we're going to have a prayer meeting, <laughs> you might have a church of 103 people who show up. They're not really passionate about prayer. When you find a people that are passionate about prayer, you found the remnant. Because they're willing to pay any price to see God's purposes released in the earth. They're willing to stand in the gap not only for churches or families or cities, but nations. God has been watching you, and you passed the test. Ezekiel was called by God to be a prophet at the age of 30. It says in Ezekiel 1, verse 1, Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Shebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. We've been captive 
and the tyranny of the familiar, the religious systems of this world, the darkness that's been, no, captivity's broken today. We're coming out. No more captivity. No more captivity. No more captivity. Victory. 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 John the Baptist was 30 years of age. And he was out in the wilderness. Here's the thing about coming to the place of maturity. You know, when we went to Bible college or we, we learned about church growth, they always said you got to be careful of demographics. You got to make sure you're playing your church in a specific area where there's mass transit, where it's close to airports. If you're going to, they give you all of these demographics. Because, you know, we got to think like the world if we're going to capture the world. That's from the pit of hell, by the way. You listen to the king and you do what he says, that's what you need. Not demographics. Not church growth seminars that said, I got to copy that man because he's got a mega church. That's idolatry. No, you get before God and you do what he says. Just as John the Baptist was out in the wilderness of the Jordan all by himself when God began to move on people and they went out. And that's where God was moving. And people will always find where God is moving. You're going to see spontaneous outbreaks of revival in the poorest areas of your cities as God begins to visit the downtrodden, the lost, the offscouring. He's going to visit them and raise them up. And he's, they're going to confound the leaders of the nation and the leaders of churches because God is not going to be hindered by church programs and by unbelieving Christians. He's going to move. Many nations of the world are having spontaneous outbreaks right now of the Spirit of God among the outcasts of society, and they're gaining ground. I'm telling you, God is moving profoundly, just as He said He would. Little outbreaks that start in different regions that are going to come together as one great last burning flame for God. What a day we live in. What a time and a season. What an honor that God has brought you and I into this generation to see this greatest move of God the world's ever known. There's never been a day like this. And He chose you for this. Jesus officially started His ministry at age 30. In three years, some will argue three and a half years, so fine. In that shorter time, he turned the world upside down. He changed it all. At the end of the age, Scripture teaches us that God is going to do a quick work. Well, 40 is the number of testing, the time that David ruled as a king because he came of age. And some of those prophets ministered for years. Look, the picture of Jesus for us at the end of the age is that the Lord is going to do a quick work that's going to bear more fruit than all the past years you've had of ministry because He's doing a new thing. He's releasing the blessings of heaven. He's established you solidly upon the rock, which is Christ. You've come of age. He's putting the signet ring on your hand. You have authority. You have inheritance. And remember, when Jesus went to the Jordan, I love this, Jesus went out into the wilderness, into that move that God was doing through John the Baptist. John the Baptist's ministry was not very long. At the most, it was a year and a half. And look what he did. He ushered in the final move called Jesus. He, offered, uh, he, he ushered in the greatest expression of God the world's ever known and ever will know, Jesus Christ. Only God knows what He has in store for you. Only God knows what He has in store for me. But I want to tell you something. When you come of age, it's a different venue. It's a different world. It's a different time and it's a different season. There's greater clarity. There's greater authority. You've heard me teach a little bit on what's in a name, sonship. 
at the name of Jesus, at the character of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses he's Lord. You come of age at 30. That's the place of maturity. That's where God breathes on you a grace so that you walk as the king. You talk as the king. You conduct yourself as the king, and you reflect heaven on earth, and God can entrust to you the powers of the age to come, the resources of heaven, the wisdom of God, because you're not going to abuse it and use it on yourself. You're going to fulfill his desire for your life and his passion for the lives of many others. This is that hour. This is the day of coming forth. This is the hour of maturity. Rejoice. Rejoice. What's, more, what's even more fascinating about the number 30, and there's many other examples in Scripture, is that many people, especially those above, experience a complete change in their lives at that age. Let me prophesy this to you. You're entering into a season of complete, drastic change. Oh, you're not getting that. Let me give you both sides of that coin. The change that coming and is now upon you is not just a change in how you conduct yourself, how you interact, what the favor of God is on your life, how ministry is conducted, the, the results of prayer, intercession, and ministry. That's, that's huge. But the change is also this. You're not going to get away with today now what you got away with tomorrow. There's a level of responsibility you're entering into that you, you, you never had to put up with that before. Why? Because you're now mature. You're called to maturity. You're not going to get away with those things. Even though it might not be sin. But because you're mature sons and daughters, you're coming into that season, there are things you must lay down in order to bring honor to His name. God is good. I was listening to, to, to Brother Hagen, Papa Hagen, as they call him. He, he, he was talking about pastors or ministries, in, even in his generation, that would keep people in the place of you know, nappies and milk. They would never allow them to grow up. He said, but the truth is, when you develop faith, when you teach people how to walk by faith, they can't stay 14 months old all of their life. You expect something more out of somebody who's walked with God for 14 years than somebody who's been there for 14 months. There's a process in the natural realm of maturity and growing up. There's a process in the realm of the Spirit. As you mature, you have to learn to contend with God and take hold of the Word for your life so that you can help others instead of always needing somebody to carry you. You're not going to get away with those things anymore. You ever notice when people first get saved, it's just like they have this honeymoon season. Everything's easy. Every prayer is answered. They get healed instantly and immediately. And then a few later, years down the road, they're going, how come it doesn't work? How come it doesn't work? Every time I go up for prayer now, it never works. That's because you're not supposed to go up for prayer every time. You're supposed to hold on to God for yourself and learn how to walk in that. You're of age. You're of age. This is the season of Goliath being destroyed. This is the season of the mountains being brought low. This is the season of the outcast coming home. God is awesome. Can you imagine the despair Joseph must have felt some days? I would imagine, because every one of you has been touched with that at times in your life. Where, Lord, we've been praying and we have to take it by faith, but God, we don't see it, we don't feel it, we don't understand it. How come it's so hard, God? How come this Christian life is not all roses? It's just thorns. God's perfected your character. He's working on it. He's going to continue to work on your character. Thank God for that. You know, he only chastens those whom he loves. Go ahead, slap them, Lord. Show them how much you love them. (laughs) 
David was also in a time in his life where he was uncertain. I mean, how many years did he have to contend with the past anointing to be able to step into the new thing God was doing? How many years did he have to deal with the darkness that had descended on Israel through a king who had walked away from God? How many years have you had to contend in this nation when a government has turned away from God, when the people have ignored God, when everything looks like death and destruction and, and, and loss and folly? But I'm telling you, it's changing today. It's changing in this 30th year. You're coming into your fullness of calling and destiny, your fullness of authority, your fullness of influence. The fullness of the favor of God is resting upon you now. You're going to see when you pray, you're going to start seeing instant answers. You're going to start seeing strategies released from heaven that you never even conceived before, and they're going to have quick results because they're God's timing right now. You're in that season of tremendous movement of God. And He's been waiting for you. These men were probably downtrodden. Of course they were. They may have given up hope of ever having a normal life. Yet God used His sovereign power to completely change the circumstances. You're in that season. I don't know what it is you're facing in your individual lives or in the ministry, your business and your family. God is about to completely change your circumstances. Get hold of this prophetic word. I told you when the Lord was showing this to me, how the unction, the weight of the prophetic anointing that came on me, I don't get that very often when I'm preparing a message. But he kept telling me, study 30, study 30, study 30. It's important. It's important for you to understand this. It's important for you to understand this because this is your season. This is the hour that God's doing something new in this nation. The key to all these verses, all these people, was that they were in the will of God. Wait, what? Joseph was in the will of God? Yes, he was. David was in the will of God having to run from Saul? Yes, he was. Look at the lessons they learned in those seasons. Jesus was in the will of God where he had more wisdom at age 12 than all the teachers in Israel, but he submitted himself again? Yes, he was. Because God was perfecting their character. He was positioning them for destiny. And that's what he's been doing. We've seen a change, Reshma and I, since the first time we came here. Not only in the, the expectation and not only in the, the movement that God has got you all affiliated with, not only in your passion and your hearts, but in his response. The response of heaven is here today. Watch and see what God does. Watch and see what the Lord's going to do from this day forward. John the Baptist was a guy who ate locusts and wore odd outfits. Yet even in his very short ministry, Jesus said of John the Baptist, listen to this, I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. The destiny that God is speaking right now, the coming of age, has the voice of the Father speaking from heaven saying, these are my beloved sons and daughters in whom I am well pleased. God is well pleased with your petitions, your intercessions, your standing in integrity and for purity and holiness in this nation. The Father is well pleased because He's found a people that long after His heart that are willing to contend for what He has on His heart and He's going to move strongly on your behalf now. Where you've struggled in your own life with infirmity, with lack, God is about to strengthen you and give you abundantly into your life like you've never experienced before. The older are going to get younger. Joshua and Caleb's are coming forth as well as the younger generation because they need fathers and daughters just as they need fathers and sons, mothers and sons. There's a generation 
that has grown up without parenthood in the kingdom as well as in the world. You can see it all over the world. That's why the world is in such evil upheaval because the last generation was fatherless and quite often motherless. But God's changing that. He's changing the hearts of the children back to the father. That father and fathers and mothers in the faith. Read the rest of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60 where your sons and daughters are going to come from afar and they're going to be imparted into them this revelation of the light and the glory that God has bestowed upon you, this radiance, this outshining of His personhood, and they're going to have it imparted into them and never flee and never leave it again. Thank God. Part of your contending over these years is as you felt, Lord, we've been standing in the gap for a nation, yet we see our families dissolving. We see problems among us. But God's not forgotten His covenant. He said for years, you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. Get your hands off now and let God move. Get your hands off now and let God move. Let God move. Jesus Himself went from a lowly carpenter, from a lowly town, to a Messiah and King of Kings who had changed the world at age 30. This is graduation day, the beginning of destiny, the beginning of your ministry, the beginning of your ministry, the beginning of your ministry. Yeah, but we've been doing this for years. Yeah, but that was just intro. Now it's beginning. And God will strengthen that which remains. God will support you and continue to move through you. And the more you stay in the place of humility before God, the more He can lift you up and move through you. I want to do what He showed me to do the other day. You're going to receive your signet ring today. All of this just goes to show that in one day, in one season, a life that was bleak or boring or broken or or downcast or outcast can be changed in a moment. That's the word God told me to bring to you here. This is changing now at this conference. This is changing in your 30th anniversary. There's a shift. There's a shift. Leaders of business, leaders of government, leaders of entertainment are going to start filling the stadiums because they're hungry for God. The men and women of influence in the nations are going to feel that tug towards God, and He's raised you up in this hour to bring them into the kingdom. And that's going to filter down. See, he's starting revivals and awakenings in the outcast, but he's also going to bring in those who thought they were something when they actually they were nothing. There's a shift taking place. Stand up. I'm going to do this prophetically as the Lord showed me to do this. I'm going to tell you, I've seen Rushman. I, I hadn't thought about this for quite a number of years since this happened. You see, on Rosh Hashanah, when the Lord visits me, that's what He's releasing to the church, not an individual. He was telling me that we're in the season of maturity, of sonship coming forth. And so there was a couple times right after that, we shared this in a number of places, and the Lord moved so powerfully that we were in awe of what He did, and we saw life shift and change from that day on. What we're going to do is just a prophetic gesture. We're going to trust God. Some of, listen, it doesn't matter if you feel this or not, but if you, faith is more important than feeling. Do you know that? You can see it if you close your eyes and activate that, but faith is more important. Some of you will feel it doesn't matter if the rest of you or, or anybody else, it doesn't matter. You receive by faith. That's maturity. Put up your right hand. Lord, as they lift their hand, On this 30th anniversary, this celebration of your goodness and bringing them through this point of maturation and maturity, I'm asking now, Lord, that you would speak from heaven. This is my beloved people in whom I am well pleased. 
and place that signet ring on their hand now. Release your authority. Release your inheritance. Release them to the fullness of what you have designed them to walk in. Father, let that come into them like it did me, like a burning fire, like a volcano going off, like a roaring lion. Let faith arise. Let every enemy they face in their life now be scattered. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What I am releasing to you this day is what I have foreordained before the world began. I saw you this day in this house having gone through this process so that I could release you as mature sons and daughters at the end of the age. This is the fulfillment of my heart's desire. This is the fulfillment of my word. I have called you into the kingdom for such a time as this. As you receive this by faith, you will begin to walk in a new life in Christ. You're going to begin to walk as mature sons and mature daughters. You will even recognize that your thought patterns have changed, that the way you respond or react is different because maturity has come. And I am going to begin to minister to you and minister through you in a new way in this hour. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. We love you, Father. You've opened the eyes of our heart, Lord. Now we can see Jesus. Lord, today we reach out and touch him. And Lord God, we say that we love him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Let your fire fall, Father. Let your fire fall. Cleanse them and purify them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.